So as I was praying uh, for the Lord to give me a message, He said, I want you to tell this message, beating sin once and for all. Mm. And as he told me, so I was like, Lord, you know, beating, that seems kind of kind of violent, kind of harsh. So I was like, maybe we can change it and be like overcoming sin. He said, no, I want us to use the word beating. Because, church, let me tell you this morning, we are going to be beating up, punching back at all the punches that the enemy has thrown at us. That today we're not just overcoming. See, overcoming, it brings such a, a passive a passive like implication. And the Lord is saying, we have to get physical. Why? Because the enemy is not scared to get physical in our lives. Right? The enemy is not scared to get off up in our business, to try and get real personal, to ruin our whole lives. He's ruthless. And the Lord is saying, today is the day that we take what the enemy meant for evil. We allow him to turn it for good. Amen? Amen. 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 So, beating sin once and for all. And... We're going to go through five ways that sin stops us from our calling. And you're like, okay, wait, I thought we were supposed to go on the offensive side. Why are we talking now about a sin again? And just as an overview of everything, we're talking about five ways sin stops us from our calling. But the thing is, the only way to beat sin once and for all is to walk in our calling. It's the only way. It's the only way. I could come up with a giant list of a bunch of little ways that we can try and do this and this and this to make us feel like we're making progression. But the Lord is saying, let, let me just simplify it. Walk in your calling and you will beat sin once and for all. Amen? Because the enemy brings hate. So we just have to do the counterfeit. Do you know that when we love one another with God's love, that's punching the enemy in the face. Do you know that when we forgive each other, that, that when we choose not to be angered, when we choose to just have that peace of God, that is a punch to the enemy's face. Yep, yep. See, the enemy, he wants us to get mad at him out of anger. The enemy wants us to get mad at him out of just revenge. And the Lord is saying, no, no, no. See, the enemy wants us to get mad at him like that. Why? Because those are the things that he produces. God is saying, if you really, if you really want to make the enemy mad, if you really want to beat him and overcome him once and for all, you just got to walk in my love. Right. Just walk in my word and walk in your calling. Nobody can take the calling God has placed on your life away from you. It's unique. One of a kind in each and every one of your lives. And I want you guys to understand something that... Sometimes we get the perception that walking in your calling means we have to do something big. Like, oh, I have to donate a bunch of money to a charity to walk in my calling. I have to do something to where everyone will be like, oh, yeah, they're Christian. And the Lord is saying, that's not what walking in your calling is. Walking in your calling literally means walking where God is calling you to go. Every day, every second, every minute. I can tell you, even last night, I um, went to my dad's closet because he has a bunch of ties. And, you know, I was, was going to go pick out my tie I was going to wear. And <laughs> as I was going through, I was like, oh, my goodness, he's got so many. I was like, which one do I wear? And even though there's so many ties, as I was, like, moving them aside and stuff, the Lord just pointed th this one out. He said, I want you to wear this one. And I was like, okay. So it was so cool because the walking in the calling literally means God wants to be a part of everything. Yeah, even yeah. the tie you wear. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. the tie you wear. Don't leave God just for a worship service. Yeah. Walking in your calling is saying, as I even leave this place today, God, I'm just listening to whatever you want to say to me. Right. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Sometimes we say, hey, how's it going? And he does that. He does that. Why? Because he's a relational God. Yeah. The reason that you feel so weary and you feel so down and drained sometimes is because you're striving. And the Lord is saying, that's why the enemy is, that, that's that back door the enemy has. And God even shows us in his word, all the way back to Adam and Eve, what happened? God set up this whole plan for Adam and Eve. And then the snake came in, right? See, the enemy is nothing. The enemy's plan is nothing without God's plan. He just has to sneak in there and mess one thing up to ruin it all. And that's what happened. Adam and Eve, what they gave in to what the snake said, and we saw what happened. So as we talk today about walking in our calling, I want you to understand that the things that we're going to go through 
our, our back doors and how the snake sneaks in to mess up our calling. They're back doors to where we're like, but God, I'm reading my Bible, but God, I say that I love you. But the Lord's saying, there's some back doors we need to close up. There's some back doors so that when you feel like, oh, I've been reading my word, oh, I've been trying to listen to you, but I can't hear your voice, and everything seemed to be going bad. The Lord's saying, because there's some back doors. So today, <laughs> we're just going to close those back doors, and we're going to identify these tiny little ways. So he's that little slithery snake. He has to be so, so distinct. It's always the tiniest thing. But something we have to understand is even if the tiniest thing is off, it's out of the will of God. God wants us walking. He loves us so much. He wants us walking in the perfect will of him, of who he is. And when we begin to do that, everything else, the world, the pressures, everything, they'll come, but they'll fade away. So, Father God, we'll just pray once again. Father God, I just pray for clarity and, Father God, for all distractions. Just to see that they would really get this down in their heart, just as you got it down in mine. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 26, um, starting at verse 36. And this takes us to um, the story of Jesus. And we know that the story of Jesus is so powerful. And, see, God is so good that he placed everything that we would need along the way before we even got there. And so we're starting off when Jesus was walking out his calling. His calling was what? To die on the cross for our sins. And see, God is so good. He said, okay, I've told you that I put a calling on your life, but now I'm even going to send my son to show you an example of how to walk out that calling. So we start when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. I don't want to stop right there. He said, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Now, what I want you guys to understand is in that very moment in time, fear swept past his mind. Why? He's Jesus. He can't experience fear. No, the word says that when Jesus came down to earth, he came as a human. Not a human that says, oh, but, you know, I came from heaven, so, you know, I'm different than all you guys. I actually have supernatural power. You see me doing all that. No, he said, I'm coming down that I may think like a human, that I may feel like a human, that I may experience everything as a human. Right. Why did he do this? So as we walk out our calling, we don't have an excuse. Oh, but the, the fear just took, it took over and I just couldn't do it. And the Lord shows us right here in this passage. Jesus went through the same thing. And he says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. So he's like, crucifixion's actually here now. We're not just talking about it, it's actually here. And he was such in distress. I mean, imagine if that was you. It's the same mindset, the same humanly flesh. We all live in the same flesh. And he's thinking, Lord, if this cup can be taken from me, let it happen. But see, that's not where the passage ends. It says, yet... Not as I would, but as you would. Mm -hmm. And see, in that very moment in time as he's in the garden, fear is knocking at the door of his brain. Fear is entering in. But he didn't let it stay there. He said, wait, 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 wait. But not as I would, but God as you will. And in that very moment, you know what he did? He looked fear in the face, and he said no. He said no. How many times has God called us to something, but we don't finish it out with, but not as I will, but God as you will. And we let those, those fear, those intrusive thoughts, all those things stop us from walking in the calling. Sometimes it happens without us even realizing it. And the Lord is saying, I sent my son in his flesh that it is possible. It is possible. 
what reality is. You want to know the reality of walking in your calling? It's when fear comes, what do you do? You say, but not as I am, but God is you. If we would understand that we're not here on this earth for ourselves. You can build up all the wealth in this world, all the status and success. That all fades away. Right. That all fades away. But when you begin to access the supernatural realm, and you, when he's saying this, he's basically saying, God, I'm giving my life into your hands. God said, I'm going to bless you. God said, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to take care of you. And in this sense, he used Jesus to take away the sins of the world. Amen? Amen. And as we continue on to uh, verse 40, it says, Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So again, we see from this passage that Jesus didn't just do it once. He did it three different times. Well, he was like, God, like, I want your will to be done, but if there's another way, you know, we can go with that. And the Lord was like, no, mm. this is the way. This is the only way. You need to walk in what I've called you to do. And Jesus, what did he do? He yielded to that. And he obeyed that. But see, there's two parts of this story. It wasn't just Jesus. There's Jesus praying and doing all these things, but then there's the disciples. And what are they doing? They're sleeping. Do you think if the disciples realized that that was the last time they would see Jesus before he was going to, going to be crucified, that they would be sleeping? See, this whole time they're like, oh, Jesus, he's, he's just trying to flex that he's you know, really in touch with God, he can pray, he does this all the time, we're going to be asleep, we'll see him in the morning. But yet, there was no morning. How many times? How many times? Have we been walking with God, walking in the steps of God? And God's saying, I want to bring something big into your life. Here's the harvest. Here it is. Here it is. Get ready. Get ready. And we go, oh, but God, you know, I know you want me to do this, but I'm kind of tired. I, I know you want me to minister to this person, but I just don't really feel like talking to people today. And, and we become lazy. We become lazy. We cannot become lazy. On the calling of God. Amen. Why? Because in our weakness, He is strong. Yeah. You can't just walk away and stay in the weakness. You've got to rise up and say, you know what, God? Your calling brings strength. So I may be feeling weak right now, but I'm still going to do it. I'm yeah. still going to do it. Yeah. Why? Because I am walking in the path of God. I'm walking in the path of God. And that's, that's. Where the increase can come. That's where everything can flow. Because the Lord is saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. So why? When we're like, but God, you've been talking to me. I've been worshiping you. I've been reading my word. But yet, I became lazy in some parts. Yes, but I, I still worship you. And now, it seems like there's a back door open. And, the, and, and all these bad things are, and I'm feeling all these bad types of way. And the Lord is saying, you cannot let that back door open. That snake, all he needs is just the tiniest door. Right. That tiniest door. The same way, Peter, what happened to him? He was walking on water with Jesus, but when he looked away, he sunk. He sunk. The Lord is saying, don't become lazy on me. Don't become lazy on me. I'll provide strength. When you're feeling weak, I'll provide strength, mental strength. When you become mentally weak, God does it in all aspects, every aspect. Now my question for you is, do you trust Him? Do you trust Him? Do you, do you truly believe that when, because we could say, oh yeah, in my weakness, He's strong. But when you are weak, do you go to Him for strength or do you go to comfort? Because comfort and strength are two very different things. 
comfort heals and feeds our flesh. But God's strength heals and feeds our spirit. We have to let the spirit reign above everything else. Let the spirit reign above everything else. Don't be lazy in whatever God has called you to do. Do it with all your strength, all your might. And chapter 27, verse 28 through 31. Mm. Now this, this is the part where now Jesus is being whipped. He's being spit on, mocked, all these things. So now we see that Jesus said, fear, you may have came and knocked at the door, but I'm not letting you in. I'm going through with this. I'm going through with this. And he, even when Peter... Peter tried to cut off a soldier's ear. He said, stop, stop, stop. i got to go through with this. And as it says in verse 20, it says, They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, hey, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off his robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. See, now in this moment, Jesus is walking out his calling. And the, the reason that he had to walk such a painful and gruesome calling, I mean, this is like the worst of the worst. He's being beaten and crucified on a cross. The reason he had to do that is so he could say, there's no excuse for my people. That when I've called you to do something, you can't say, oh, but it's too hard, I just can't do it. He's saying, I did the worst of the worst, so there's no more excuses. And the time is now. Whatever I've called you to do, do it. Do it. Don't complicate the plan of God. Don't add stuff. Don't add stuff. The Lord is saying, I've made it so simple and so understanding. Just begin to walk in it. And in this very moment, as he's being beaten, he had to have the right focus. Focus. It's not just about focus, it's the right focus. Because in that moment, I can guarantee you the enemy, he was whispering, whispering so many lies. Stop getting back up. You can't take another hit. You can't do this. You're too weak. This hurts. Do you really want more pain? Do you really want more pain? And see, if he focused on that, he would not have been able to get back up. He wouldn't have been able to access that strength. See, God didn't just make him vulnerable to the hits. No, he was taking the hits, but he had the strength. Why? Because he had the right focus. And what was that focus? That he wasn't thinking of what all the lies the enemy was whispering, what his flesh was feeling. His focus was each and every one of us. And as he was taking those hits, he thought of each and every one of us. And he said, I know. I know. Why the Lord places calling in my life is to take away the sins of the world. My blood has to be shed. This has to happen. But it was so easy for him to get the wrong focus. So easy. But he had to stay locked in. He had to stay right there and say, I don't care what you're saying, enemy. I don't care what you're saying. I'm focused. I'm focused. He let his love, his love, God's love just hover on his life that he was able to get back up. That he was able to take those hits and still continue on to carry the cross. Church, I want to let you know today, you got to stay focused on who the caller is. He's called you, not the world. Not the world. The world will provide you a counterfeit. Right. Right. And it'll look good. It will. It'll look good and it'll be good for a while. But I'm telling you, that's what the enemy wants. He wants you distracted on the wrong focus so you miss the blessing. Right. And God is saying, there's no more. There's no more of that. There's no more of that. That if you're going to do something for me, I want it to be all for me. See, God's a jealous God. Why is he a jealous God? Because it leaves no room for the praise to go to anybody else. Because when we start to get praise from people... 
we start to like it a little too much. When, when the world kind of starts lifting us up, we begin to like it a little too much. And the Lord is saying, whoa, 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 whoa. How did we get so far off from where I called you to be? You wanted to be humble when you first started up, but you got to stay humble. You have to continue to give yes. me the glory. Don't give the glory to the people that make you feel good. Right. God is not a feeling. If you right. want to stay fully in a relationship with God, you cannot be based off of a feeling. Why? Because God is real. He's living. He's alive. He's alive. And I get so worried. I get so worried when people are like, oh, I sometimes talk to God, but when that one worship song is on, I can really feel him. Or when that one person speaks, I can really feel him. No, 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 no. God is not based off of a song. God is not based off of a church service. God is based off of who he says he is. That's right. That's good. And as much as we want to just say, Amen, amen. Yeah, let's quickly apply and go. It's some. It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Just like Brother Mike was saying, it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. God shows us that in His Word. He's saying, I don't care about your outward appearance. I'm looking at your heart. So you can leave here today and look like you got everything together, but the Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows your heart, and He's saying, I want to be in true relationship. True focus. The reason you can't stay focused is because you never were focused in the first place. Because when you lock eyes with Jesus, there's no looking at anything else. When you lock eyes with Jesus, there's no looking at the winds and the waves. Why? Because God is lifting us up. God is transform, transforming and changing everything around us. But are you focused and will you let him? Will you let him? Church, we're seeing revival and all this stuff break out. All over the nation. And I don't know about you guys. But as I'm looking at all this. I'm like. I've been having revival in myself. Ever since Jesus Christ stepped into my heart. That day after day after day after day. The Lord is bringing something greater. Something new. Something miraculous. And everyone. One day they'll be praising God. And then they'll be in their pity party. And it's like no no no. Lock eyes with Jesus. Let your focus stay on him. I don't care where you are. You don't have to be in your low place. To talk to God, talk to him everywhere. Take him, take him with you everywhere you go. Why? Because he has to be our focus in everything. We lose focus on him. We lose focus on everything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And something that kind of goes hand in hand with focus is our dependency. Our dependency. This is a big one. This is a big one. And um, this is one of the most important things I want you guys to get. Because as Jesus is walking out his call, do you think he's worried about where the disciples are? Do you think Jesus is like, man, I really wish I had my friends here? Because they were friends. They were friends. They walked, they laughed, they talked, they ministered together. Do you think he was like, I really wish I had my friends here to save me. I really wish I had my family here to help me. No. Why? Because he was not dependent on them. He was not dependent on them. If you're dependent on a friend or somebody else to walk you through your calling, then you're not really walking out your calling. Again, why? Because all walking out your calling is, is just saying, Hey, God, what's up? And you say, hey, let's go do this. And then he just gives you revelation after revelation. You see everything in your life turn around. So why? Why do you need anybody else telling you how to walk out your life with God? The only one that can is God. Why? Because it doesn't all look the same. So they're like, oh, well, I did this. God kind of told me this, so you should do it. No, no, no. Play your part in the body of Christ. We can no longer be dependent, be lenient on a person. Why? Because a person is not a firm foundation. But, but better yet, we cannot be dependent on a feeling of God. Why? Because, see, that snake, that little snake, what does he do? See, there's God, and then there's the feeling of God. And in our own fleshly mind, they're very similar. They're very similar. So what does the enemy do? We have God living in our life, right? But then we start to be dependent on other things. <clears throat> and what the enemy does is he pushes out God and he places in that feeling of God. 
And we, we didn't realize that anything happened. We think that God's still right there. We're worshiping him. But we have to do a heart check. Sometimes we're worshiping a feeling of God and we didn't even realize it. And then when the winds and the waves and the storms come, we're like, okay, time to get on my firm foundation. That foundation was not very firm. Why? Because it wasn't God. It wasn't God. Whatever is going on in your life, do a heart check. Do a heart check. God, I only want you. Nothing else. Only you. And we've even seen that in all of our lives. That we're walking with God. And then when that wind and the waves and the storms come, we realize, wow, that wasn't really God. That wasn't really God. And the Lord is saying here today, you can no longer be tricked up by anything else. Today is the day that you stand up and that you beat sin once and for all. And if Jesus could go and get beat if Jesus could go through all of that and still have his focus on God. What's stopping you? That's right. What's stopping you? Amen. What's stopping you? And see, like I said earlier, we're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. And if you really want to see revival, if you really want to see the manifestation of the supernatural of God here on earth, the Lord's saying, you've got to begin to walk. In my steps, begin to walk. Because we cannot all come into unity if we're not all united about the same thing. We all have to be on the same page. And I don't care if the enemy, you know, tweaks a little bit different, something different. I don't care. Stop focusing on what the enemy's doing. Focus on what God is trying to do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to go down to Luke. 23. And this is, this is a very powerful, very powerful part of the story. And this is, this is the part where Jesus is now on the cross. After he picked it up, carried it all the way, after being beat. And, and there's two criminals that actually deserve to be crucified next to him. So Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 39, it says, One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said? Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I want to tell you something about those two guys on the cross. One of them mocked Jesus. And because of that, he perished. And one of them humbled himself, knowing he was a sinner. And the Lord said, truly, you will be with me in paradise. And I want to let you know something, that those two guys on the cross... One of those guys is each and every one of us in the whole world. In the whole world. But there's, there's some of us who are saying, you know what, God, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve it. But God, remember me. He's saying, because you have humbled yourself, I will bring you into my kingdom. And then there's those who mock him, spit on his name, rebuke him. Why? Because of mis- Understanding. Misunderstanding. Church, I want you to understand something today. As we go out into this world, it's a hateful world, sinful world. I want you to stop joining in with the hate. And I want you to understand that those people that you see in your everyday life that curse the name of God, that spit on the name of God, it's because they just have a misunderstanding, a misrepresentation of who he truly is. And instead of snapping back, instead of getting mad or thinking of them like a bad person, just let your light shine to show them who God truly is. Why are we getting mad at those that are mad at God when they don't even know the real God? 
If you know the real God, then just begin to show everything that he is. You don't even have to say anything. Why do you think we sing those songs? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Because just at the light that Jesus brings, hearts are changed. Hearts are changed. Because there's a lot of hurting, dying spirits. It's a spirit thing. It's a spirit thing. They let it out in the physical and the emotional. But it's a spirit thing. And if we could just bring life. Yeah. To those spirits dying. Yeah. Their eyes will be open to where you don't even have to help them. You don't have to say anything. They'll just fall on their face just like you did when you first saw who God truly was. And that is what walking in the calling truly is. <laughs> don't let a misunderstanding stop you. From accessing the kingdom of God. Accessing the miracle zone. Accessing his presence. His presence is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. And don't let misunderstanding even get in your own heart. There's so many people. Well, I I think he was God, but it might have been me. It might have been the enemy. I don't know. I want you to chase God so much, so deeply, that there's no doubt I want his, his voice sounds like. I want you to chase him so strongly with endurance that the moment he speaks, you know it. You know it. Why? Why? Because you know his voice. He, his word says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. So if you're having doubts, I don't know if this is, get that heart check. Is the door open? Is that back door open? Is that snake trying to lie to me? That's all he does. That's all he does. It's lying. It's lying. And instead of wrestling, you know, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we also don't wrestle against the foolishness of the enemy. We don't wrestle against the foolishness. All Satan's trying to do is distract us from what? Our calling. That's all he wants to do. Your calling looks different, it sounds different, but yet we all come together as one. Yeah. But it's only when we truly walk in our call. It's only when we truly say, you know what? Maybe I have let fear stop me. Maybe my focus hasn't been as sharp as it's always been. Maybe I have been kind of lazy. And if you if you just want to walk and say, no, no, I, I don't have any of these things. I'm just no perfect walking. You know, I, I follow... Don't follow the law. Follow him. The law doesn't move, but God moves. God moves. The law will keep you in the same box. But God is saying, reach this finish line and let's move on to the next. And to the next. And to the next. And then and only then is when we'll finally begin to see that revival. That revival that everyone's praying for. Lord saying, I'm just waiting on you guys. I'm waiting on you guys. It's not a building he's trying to build. It's our hearts. It's our hearts. And her Bible was not spread through an announcement saying, we're going to get together and stay here for a certain amount of time. Why? Because that, even that, we can't do that forever. We can't just stay in a building forever and seclude ourselves and just worship. No, but we can take that revival that sparked up in us and take it out to those who are hurting, those who are feeling alone. Did you know that those who feel alone, and I don't care who it is, someone who doesn't know God or even does know God, if they say they feel alone, that right there, that's an indicator. Why are you feeling alone? Because if you have God with you, you should never feel alone. Don't let that feeling of God replace who God truly is. Don't let that counterfeit plan of God replace God's real plan. And so I can sit here and give you a whole list. Oh, you know, read your word because that helps you not sin. Oh, worship because that helps you. No. All those things. They help in the moment. They strengthen us in the moment. If you want to be sin once and for all, walk in that calm with all your heart. 
with all your soul, with all your mind. Everything you have, everything you have, everything you have. And if you ever forget, go back to this story and see what Jesus did. See what Jesus did because he didn't, he didn't do all of that just to say, oh, I'm the only one that can do it. He did it to save all of you. He walked that cross all the way up. He shows us every detail. Even that man that helped him cry, carry the cross. God said, I'm going to send people along your journey to help you. But that helper didn't finish it. You have to finish it. That helper didn't do it. You have to do it. So, Father God, Father God, I just pray that you would just have your place. If you guys could all just stand with me. Father God, I would just pray for your Holy Spirit just to touch, touch every heart right now. You're already here. yourself right now, Father God. We're not waiting till tomorrow or next week or next month. We're ignitioning. We're igniting. We're not waiting for someone else to do it just to join in. We're saying, God, I'm willing to take the first step. God, I don't want to stay in the garden any longer. I want to walk out that calm. No matter how much pain may bring to my flesh, there's joy in my spirit. No matter how much words of death the enemy may speak over me, there's words of life coming from my Father. So Father God, I would just pray that sparks would just begin to ignite right now. Right now, Father God. Right now. We don't need a complicated message or a complicated thing to make us feel good, God. We just need to be obedient. Father God, we just, right now, we just ask for forgiveness for every time that we strayed away from what you called us to do when we say, God, we take your hand. Show us the way. Show us the way. Show us the way. Show us the way. That we wouldn't wait to see a change in this world, but we would be the change in this world just as you called us to do. Father God, right now I just pray for any chains to be broken right now. No hindrances, no restrictions. Just you, Father, just you. Just you, Father. Just you and me. Just you and me. Get personal with God. Get personal with God. When's the last time you were really personal with God? That you really let him in that inner circle? Get personal with God and just let the Lord minister to your heart because it's him who brings the increase not us there's no human that can bring the increase that the father brings so father God we pray right now in the name of Jesus as we walk out of this place we would not just be hearers but doers doers (laughs) doers Doers of the word. I don't care how crazy it sounds. I don't care how crazy it sounds. God, what you've called us to do, the success that you've called us to accomplish is not the success of the world. So as you're walking through that calling, the world's going to look at you like you're crazy. The world's going to look at you like, what is this? What is this? Because my blessing doesn't come from the physical, it comes from the soup.
supernatural. It comes from the windows, the gates of heaven. The gates of heaven. And God, that we would understand that we were called to be followers of Jesus. Not replicas. Not replicas. Followers. That God, we would stop limiting ourselves. Father God, let us not limit ourselves and say, well, he was Jesus, so that's why he did it. But we realize why he did it. That we would be, be able to walk. That we would be able to speak. Any hindrance that has stopped you from just speaking the word of God to anybody, I break that. I break that right now in the name of Jesus. Because it's so easy to scream, Jesus, in a church house. But is it easy to do in the streets? Is it easy to do in the workplaces? And the Lord's saying that, that right there, that right there is where the shift, the manifestation of heaven can come down. When you will not be afraid. You will not be afraid to bring the name of Jesus everywhere. So, Father God, I just pray as we go into this weekend that this would not be a Sunday morning faith. Take this into Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, and all the days of our life. And we wouldn't let our agenda keep us foolish from what you're trying to do.